Well, hello, good people. Welcome to the first video of Comfy UI 101, or whatever I decide to call it. For those of you that are new to Comfy UI, or maybe you've been using Focus or Forge, and you've been hesitant to learn Comfy UI, this is the video for you. Now, do me a favor. I'm going to do a lot of talking, but it's important that you stick with me. It may not be the most entertaining type of video, but I assure you that everything we cover will be broken down to its simplest form, and that you no longer have to fear the noodles of Comfy UI. Now, if you haven't installed Comfy UI and its manager, I already have a dedicated video to that. Make sure to check the link in the description below or on the end card. Now I want to start off on a clean slate. So if you happen to have the default workflow, just head up here into edit and click on clear workflow. And then at the very bottom corner here under settings, not going to make too many changes right now, but there are a couple of places I want you to check. Go to light graph, scroll down to the very bottom, and you're going to see reroute beta. Go ahead and toggle that on as we're going to use this later on. And then under appearance, go ahead and pick a color palette you like. If you want it light, you can pick light. Solarize, I tend to like because I like the colors, but for me, I'm going to use arc. It's a nice dark theme, then we can go ahead and click out of it. Now some simple navigation, if you have a scroll wheel, you can just scroll up and down to zoom in and out. And then if you left click and hold, this is how we can pan and move within Comfy UI. Now when we make a workflow, there's a little toggle link visibility. This will hide the noodles when you don't want to see them. And then of course we have zoom in, zoom out here manually, fit to view, and select mode. Now before we get started, I do want to start with SDXL because learning Comfy UI with SDXL is sort of like the foundation to understand Flux, Pony, Auraflow, all of those other models. So for now, we're going to work with an SDXL model. I encourage you to download Juggernaut XL here. Make sure you're downloading the one by Rendifusion. Click on the download button. Now make sure you're installing it in your main Comfy UI folder under Models, Checkpoints. Future models that you're going to want to use most of the time with some exceptions when it comes to Flux will go in this folder. So go ahead and download that. So Comfy UI is a node-based platform. If you look at Focus, Forge, those type of platforms already have a front end built for you and it just makes life a lot easier. With Comfy UI, it's sort of like you're looking under the hood of those platforms and creating your own workflows from scratch. Now the two main ways to set up your nodes is to double click anywhere in the workspace and type in the node you want. But this is only when you're comfortable with Comfy UI and you know the nodes that you want. So for now, we're going to right click anywhere in the workspace and we're going to click on add node. At this point with a fresh install, we don't have any custom nodes other than the Comfy UI manager. So everything you see in this menu is built into Comfy UI. In today's video, we won't go through all of these, just the ones that we need. But for now, I want you to get used to using this menu to find your nodes. So the first one we want to look at is loaders. Click on loaders. So if we look at the options we have here, you see we have load checkpoint, load VAE, load LoRa. Anything that we need to load will be in this menu. So the one we want is load checkpoint. Let's click on that. Now, if you have other models, you can click on this area and you should be able to select those other models. Since this is a fresh install, I only have this juggernaut one. Now, before we even make a workflow, I want to talk about models in general. If you notice, we have three inputs here that are different colors, model, clip, and VAE. That's because this model is made up of three parts. We have the actual model, which is called a unit. That's what contains the data set of all the images. And then there is clip. In SDXL's case, there's clip L, clip G. And what clip does is that when you enter a prompt, it takes the model information, converts it to numbers basically, so that in the back end, it understands what it is you want from the model. And then the VA or VAE, this is the last part of the process where it converts the noise back into pixels to give you the image. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just going to explain it more visually. 
So technically speaking, if we were to look at it physically, we have the unit model here, clip, and the VAE. So all three of these things are already built into this specific model. And for SDXL, most of them come all in one. Now, I won't go too in depth about it right now. If you've heard of Flux, it's the latest models everyone is using. Although there are all-in-one models for Flux, most people like to keep it separated, mainly because of GPU limitations or system specs. But just know what I kind of just rambled about, this equals all three of these things, okay? Now to delete nodes, you just have to click on the node, see that it's highlighted, click on delete on your keyboard, or you can hold control and drag anywhere in the workspace. You see now I have a selection. Once I let go of the mouse, they're both highlighted and we can delete them all. Now let's go ahead and build a simple workflow. And there's a couple ways where we can do this. First, let's grab the clip input here. And if we drag it out anywhere onto the workspace and let go, you see by default, there's a few options we have already. The one we want is clip text and code. And when we do it that way, you see that's already connected. Alternatively, as we did earlier, you can right click, add node, go under conditioning, and then we will see right here, clip text and code prompt. Basically the same thing. We'll go ahead and add that as well. So when it comes to prompting the input that you put into this prompt area, this is a method of conditioning. You're basically telling the data set what it is you want to do. And this node is called clip text encode. And this is where I said earlier, where it takes your prompt, let's say I put portrait of a woman, and it encodes that in a numerical language that ComfyUI in the backend understands. So let's go ahead and connect the other clip to this one. And this is gonna act as our positive and negative prompt. Now what we can do is right click, click on colors, and give it green for positive. We can do the same for this one. Right click, colors, and we'll do red for negative prompt. Now, if you want to rename any node, you could just double click into the header and you could rename it anything you want. Now, what I encourage you to do as well, until you get familiar with ConfUI, leave the original heading so that you remember what the node is called. There's so many workflows that I've drag and dropped from someone else, and you don't really know where the node's from. I'm gonna show you how you could figure that out later, but don't worry about it right now. Okay, so for now, we're just gonna make this box a little smaller. You can always grab the corner. Now you can't grab the other corners. It's always the bottom right to adjust the size. And we'll leave that for now. Next, we wanna grab the model input, okay? And then we wanna extend it out and we're gonna select the regular case sampler, not the advanced. And once again, just to show you, if you right click add node, we go under the category sampling. You see that we have case sampler here. Now, when you're building a workflow, personally, I like to keep things linear from left to right and usually pretty clean, okay? So I'm just gonna measure these up so that the tops are kind of, they don't have to be too accurate, but kind of linear, right? And typically you'll notice that the inputs are color coded. So conditioning, you wanna put it to positive. And then the negative prompt conditioning, you wanna put it in negative. We already did the model and notice it's like a purple color. If you go back here, you see that it's purple. I'm gonna slide this down for a second. And uh, remember when I told you to toggle on that feature, that beta feature, this is what that was for. I'm gonna show you the old way. Typically when you're routing the noodles, you don't want any overlap because you wanna see it clearly. Now this is a really simple <laughs> workflow, so I can tell this input goes to there. But let's say you wanted more visibility. Now the old method was you would grab the input and select reroute and it creates this node here where you can create a little route for you, right? That's very useful if you have like this big workflow and you've got this massive workspace, right? Let me delete this. But now what they've done is you notice that there's this little circle here. If you hover over it and select Alt and hold down, it creates this reroute node automatically for you. And we can just make things a lot more cleaner, right? So if I bring this back up here, 
we can see that there's no intersecting lines and it's much more cleaner to route your noodles this way. I'm going to just show you really quickly that, you know, one of the good things I like about this is that when I change this to straight, it'll clean up the workflow so that it looks nice and tidy, not all over the place, and you can still see the noodles very clearly. For now, I'm just going to put it back. So get used to housekeeping your noodles early on. Now, if we look at the sampler node here, we're missing the latent image, and then we have an input here that we still need to fill in. And once again, we can just drag this anywhere on the space and we're going to select empty latent image and it's already connected. Obviously, this is where we set our width and height. Let's just do 1024 by 1024. But I like to think of this as an empty canvas. Going to take your prompt and information and actually create an image. Now, if we were to do it manually, we would right click add node. It would be under latent and then we will find empty latent image. Now, if we look at the sampler node, we have this latent input. So let's drag that out and we want to select VAE decode. Now, as I said earlier, the VAE decode is the last part of the process and it converts the noise to pixels. OK, it'll be much easier to explain when we generate the image. So you'll notice that we have a blank input here for the VAE and we want to connect that from the load checkpoint node right here. So we're going to grab that and bring it all the way there. And then once again, I'm just going to zoom in here and I hold alt and just bring it up here and bring this one over here. And then the last part is the image. Now, if we drag this out, you have two options, save image or preview image. Obviously, if you do preview, it's not going to save it. You will see the image, but it won't save it anywhere. We're going to select save image. And uh, a quick note for you here, I'm going to expand this a little bit here. Now, when you generate images right now, the default is going to go to your output folder. The file is just going to be comfy wide. Now, what you can do is customize this. So let's say I wanted to create a folder and I'm going to call this tutorials and then you want a front slash and then give it a file name like, I don't know, for me, I'll just put toots, click OK, not that kind of toots. <laughs> And what this does, it's going to create a folder called tutorials and the file name will be toots. I'm just going to make some simple adjustments here, move things around just a little bit. And by the way, if you did want to change the color, for example, or do the same thing for several nodes, I'm going to click all these nodes, right click over one of them and change the color to like blue, even though it looks purple. You see that uh, all the colors changed at the same time. So congratulations, you've made your very first SDXL text to image workflow. Let's go ahead and click on Q to generate the image. Now you see it's going to move through these parts and then the sampler is doing these mathematical calculations. Typically would see noise here. We forgot to turn it on. I'll show you that after. Once it's done, the VAE translates that to noise back to pixels so that it can create an image. There you go. Now the prompt was just portrait of a woman, so very simple. Now to turn on the little preview, go into your manager and under preview method, you see it's on none. You want to select it and choose this one latent to RGB fast. I'm going to go ahead and generate another one. And there you go. So this is the noise that it creates, but we have to get it from here, turn it into pixels. That's what the VAE decode does so that we have an output image. There you go. Now, if we go into our folder and if we go under output, this is where all our generations is going to be. And if we look here, you see I have a folder called tutorials. Let's click on that. And my file names are toots. <laughs> now, there are other ways to organize and save your images, but we'll get into that later. Alternatively, if you go to the very left here and you click on Q, we can pull that out. And you see we have two previews. We can even click on the eye icon to see it bigger. And we can simply just close it by clicking on the same icon. Now, I want to leave you some tips in terms of prompting and settings. We'll dive deeper into these topics, but I want to give you some tips on how you can make the most out of generating images. So in terms of prompting in general, regardless of the model you're using, whether it's SDXL or Flux, 
Context is everything. So I typically like to follow a very basic structure to start. And in your prompt, you want to identify these areas. You want to have your main subject, in action, environment, lighting, and modifiers. So if we look at the prompt that I created here, you see the anthropomorphic raccoon is a subject, the action, he's drinking coffee, the environment, he's in a cafe, the lighting at sunset, and the modifier is 2D comic illustration. Now modifiers is this whole big can of worms where it can be the type of art style, it can be supporting words like high detail, but for the most part if you follow this method, use it as a basis and add on top of it, you'll end up creating some amazing images. Now when it comes to sampler settings, what I recommend for you to start with, at least for SDXL, anywhere from 20 to 30 steps are more than enough. You can go up to 40 or 50. CFG is otherwise known as prompt guidance. Basically, the higher you put it, the more it's going to adhere to your prompt. Although that's not really true. I'm going to do separate videos on these settings eventually, but a good starting range is like four to seven, and you kind of want to balance that out with steps as well. For samplers, Euler is a good safe bet. It's a good all around one. Also, DPM plus plus to M, this one here, it's very similar to Euler, just a newer version and the scheduler goes with the sampler. So if you were using Euler, just use normal or beta. And for DPM plus plus 2M, you could use normal or Keras. But most of these fine-tuned models have suggested settings that they recommend. So in the case of Juggernaut XL, we scroll down further here, you see that there's some recommended settings. So in this case, they recommend DPM++ 2M SDE 30 to 40 steps and CFG 3 to 6, and they make a note less is a bit more realistic. So if you're doing photorealism, you want to stay between 3 to 5 most of the time. So if we take a look at another well-known model here, Epic Realism, this is one that I really like for photorealism. We scroll down below here, there's some advice in terms of prompting. And then just below, you see that there are negative prompt suggestions, steps more than 20, CFG scale of five or higher, some sampler suggestions, and even some size suggestions, okay? Now I want you to save this workflow because we're gonna build upon this. And how you can do that is if we go up to the workflow menu here, let's click on that and save as, we could give it a name. I've just called it basic SDXL text image. Click on confirm. Now I already saved it, so I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite it. Or you can save it locally, go under workflow, export, confirm the name, and then save it in a folder where you can retrieve it later. And the great thing about Comfy now on the side, there's a workflow area here. So if we click that, you see I've got the workflow here and I can just click on that to enable the workflow. If we click this icon, it'll save it as a bookmark here. So it puts it to the top. Now, while I generate some images of that raccoon prompt, let me know what you think in the comments below and what other topics do you want me to cover? I think in the next video, we'll do things like image to image, maybe how to set up LoRa's, and eventually we'll get to things like upscaling, control net, in paint all that stuff but it's very important that we cover the basics and that you understand what the heck you're doing so that you can learn these more complicated workflows and build your own system and to be honest with you guys all learning UI is to your benefit yes it could be a little intimidating at first but whenever there are new features that come out UI is always the first one to get the updates and to get support as much as I love platform Forms like Forge. We've been waiting for control net support for quite a while and honestly I don't know when that's going to come so there's no need to fear or be intimidated by Comfy UI. If someone like me can learn it, I'm sure you can too. Until that next video my friends, I'll see you when I see you.